earlier we have proved that the space C0 with norm infinity is a norm linear space and we have also proved that it is a Banach space. Today we will find the dual space of this space. Now the theorem states that the dual space of space C0 with norm infinity is space L1 with norm 1. Let me recall you the space C0. Space C0 is the set of all sequences of scalars which converge to 0 and it is a norm linear space with a norm, norm infinity defined as norm infinity of any sequence A1, A2 and so on is equal to supremum of mod of An where n belongs to n the set of natural numbers and um, the space L1 with norm 1 is the set of all sequences of scalars such that for each sequence a n summation of uh, summation over n varies from 1 to infinity mod of a n is less than infinity that means the series summation you know, mod of a n is uh, convergent and it is a norm linear space with norm defined as norm 1 of sequence say 1 a 2 and so on is equal to summation over n varies from 1 to infinity mod of a n. We have proved that these two spaces are also Banach spaces. Let us prove this theorem. Uh, we shall show that every member of C0 can be written as a linear combination of members of the set in En where n belongs to n um, where for each n belongs to n En is a sequence in which all terms are 0 except nth term which is 1. So we shall show that the set um, consisting of uh, sequences En corresponding to each natural number n is a basis of the space C0. So we consider an element let x is equal to a sequence lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on in C0. Then summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i i is equal to lambda 1 into e1 plus lambda 2 into e2 and so on lambda n into e. And this is the sequence in which first term is lambda 1, second term is lambda 2 and so on and a term is lambda n and after n term all the terms of the sequence are 0. Now we find norm infinity of x minus summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i e i and if we subtract the vector Mm, summation uh, over i varies from 1 to n lambda i i from the sequence x then we get sequence in which up to nth term all the terms are 0 and after nth term we get lambda n plus 1 lambda n plus 2 and so on and this is by definition of norm this is equal to supremum of mod of lambda i where n is less than i and i is less than infinity. If we apply limit n tends to infinity in this expression then um, i will tend to infinity and we know that since lambda i is a sequence in C0 and every sequence in C0 converges to 0. So uh, this will tend to 0 and we get uh, limit n tends to infinity norm x minus summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i i is equal to 0. And so um, from this it follows that x is equal to limit n tends to infinity summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i e i and that can be written as x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i e i. So we have expressed x as a linear combination of um, the set e n where n belongs to the set n of natural numbers. It can be easily seen that the set E n where n belongs to n is linearly independent because if we take any subset of this set then we find that that set is linearly independent and so this infinite set is also linearly independent. Thus uh, we can say that the uh, set E n where n belongs to n is a basis of the space C0. 
let f belongs to c naught star that is f is a bounded linear functional on c naught then um, from the above f image of x is equal to f image of some limit n tends to infinity summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i e i and since f is continuous being bounded so this is continuous so f can um, be um, written inside the limit so we have limit n tends to infinity f image of summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i e i and uh, since f is linear so here we have limit n tends to infinity summation over i varies from 1 to n lambda i into f of e i and if we apply limit n tends to infinity then we can write f of x as summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i f of e i. So here f of x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i f so for any x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i e i in c naught mod of f of x is equal to mod of summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i f of e i and this is less than or equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of lambda i into mod of f of e i. If we replace mod of lambda i by supremum of mod of lambda i for each i then this term will be common in all the terms and so it can be taken out from the summation sign and so this uh, expression is less than or equal to supremum of mod of lambda i where i belongs to n into summation over i where from 1 to infinity mod of f of e i and by definition of norm infinity this is equal to norm infinity of x into summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of f of e i as f is a bounded linear functional on c naught so summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of f of e i must be convergent that means uh, sum of this series is finite means sum of this series is less than infinity and thus we have shown that sequence f of e1, f of e2 and so on is an element of L1 space. Now we have to show that the dual space of C0 space is L1 space. Uh, so we shall show that dual space of C0 space is isometrically isomorphic to L1 space. We define a mapping T from C0 with norm infinity whole star to L1 with norm 1 as T image of F is equal to sequence F of E1, F of E2 and so on where F of X is equal to summation over I varies from 1 to infinity alpha I F of E. So um, here we know that since the sequence f of e1 f of e2 belongs to l1 so this mapping is well defined earlier we had shown that t is 1 1 and linear so similarly here it can be shown that t is 1 1 and linear now we show that t is on 2 so let b is equal to sequence beta 1 beta 2 and so on in l1 and we have to show that there exists a bounded linear functional g on c naught such that g t image of g is equal to b so we define a mapping g from c naught to k such that for x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i e i in c naught g image of x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i and we claim that summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i belongs to k because here we are defining mapping g from c naught to k so image must be an element of k so we find summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of alpha i beta i and this is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of alpha i into mod of beta i 
if we replace each mod of alpha i by supremum of mod of alpha i i belongs to n then this term will be common in all the terms and so it can be taken uh, outside from the summation sign and we have this expression is less than or equal to supremum of mod of alpha i i belongs to n into summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of beta i and we know that supremum of mod of alpha i where i belongs to n is nothing but uh, norm infinity of x so we have norm infinity of x into summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of beta i as sequence uh, beta 1 beta 2 uh, and so on belongs to l1 and so summation over i varies from 1 to infinity um, uh, mod of beta i is less than infinity and so we have shown that summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i is absolutely convergent and so convergent whereby summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i belongs to k because this is convergent so uh, its sum is finite and so this belongs to k and earlier we have shown that g is linear so similarly here we can show that g is linear also for x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i e i in c naught mod of g of x is equal to mod of summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i and this is less than or equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of alpha i beta i and this is less than or equal to as we have earlier um, done this is less than or equal to supremum of uh, the set mod of alpha i i with belongs to n into summation over i varies from 1 to infinity into beta i and this is equal to norm infinity of x into summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of beta i and since summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of beta i is less than infinity so we have shown that g is bounded g is uh, linear g is bounded so g is a bounded linear functional on c now as g is linear so for x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i e i in c naught g image of x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i into g of e i we have shown earlier and this is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i beta i by definition of g and so if we compare these two expressions then we find that g of e i is equal to beta i for every i belongs to n so we have shown that there exists g in the dual space of c naught such that t image of g is equal to sequence g of e i and this is equal to sequence beta i and this is equal to t and so we have shown that t is on to now we show that t is an isometry that is for f in the dual space of c naught um, norm 1 of t f is equal to norm of f if f is equal to 0 then as t is linear so t image of f is equal to 0 and so norm 1 of t f is equal to 0 and this is equal to norm of f and so let f is not equal to 0 for x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i e i in c naught mod of f of x is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity alpha i f of e i and this is less than or equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of alpha i f of e i and this is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of alpha i into mod of f of e i if we replace each mod of alpha i by supremum of mod of alpha i i belongs to n then this can be taken out of the mm, summation sign and so we have this is less than or equal to supremum of mod of alpha i i belongs to n into summation of 
i varies from 1 to infinity uh, mod of f of e i and this is equal to norm infinity of x into norm 1 of t f and if um, we divide um, this expression by norm infinity of x and then this is possible only when x is not equal to 0. So, uh, mod of f of x divided by norm infinity of x is less than or equal to norm of norm 1 of t f for every x in c naught and x is not equal to 0. If we take supremum on um, both the sides then we get supremum of the set mod of f of x divided by norm infinity of x where x belongs to c naught and x is not equal to 0 is less than or equal to norm 1 of t f. From the definition the left hand side will become norm of f and so we have norm of f is less than or equal to norm 1 of t f. We mark this inequality as 1 we have to prove the reverse inequality. So, we choose an element x naught uh, in c naught which is a sequence lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on where lambda i is equal to complex conjugate of f of e i divided by mod of f of e i where f of e i is not equal to 0 for i varies from 1 to n and lambda i is equal to 0 for i greater than or equal to n plus 1 where f of e i is equal to 0. Then now infinity of x naught is equal to supremum of mod of lambda i where i varies from 1 to infinity. And here we know that when lambda i is not equal to 0, mod of lambda i is equal to mod of complex conjugate of f of e i divided by mod of, of, mod of f of e i. And we know that mod of any a complex number is equal to mod of its complex conjugate. So, here we get 1 and so um, we have here supremum is equal to 1. As um, x naught is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i e i, f of x naught is equal to summation over i varies from 1 to infinity lambda i f of e i we have shown earlier. And uh, this is equal to when we put values of lambda i when lambda i is not equal to 0 then um, mod uh, here we get a complex conjugate of f of e i into f of e i divided by mod of f of e i and since um, uh, complex conjugate of f of e i into f of e i is mod of f of e i whole square and this is divided by um, mod of f of e i so, we get mod of f of e i and so here uh, we have summation over i varies from 1 to n because after n terms all the terms are 0. So, here we get n terms in the summation. So, we have summation over i varies from 1 to n mod of f of e i and since this is positive, so mod of uh, this will be equal to mod of f of x naught and we know that since f is a bounded linear functional this is less than or equal to norm of f into norm infinity of x naught. And so, uh, summation over i varies from 1 to n mod of f of e i is less than or equal to norm of f because norm infinity of x naught is equal to 1. And this holds for any n. And so, we can say that summation over i varies from 1 to infinity mod of f of e i is less than or equal to norm of f and so we have shown uh, that norm 1 of t f is less than or equal to norm of f and we mark this inequality as 2 and from 1 and 2 it follows that norm 1 of t f is equal to norm f. So, we have shown that t is an isometry and so we can say that t from c naught star to l 1 is an isometric isomorphism hence the dual space of c naught space is l1 space thank you